Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to show you how to ream a clarinet key. Before I get to that, I do have a hashtag for you. That's going to be uh, clarinet reaming. Make sure you take that and put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win uh, discounts on any of the courses that we have coming up. We do have a key fitting course, or sorry, a padding course yes. uh, that's going to show you how to do traditional padding and dry fitting on saxophones. That's coming up in the month of May next week. We also have a in-person basic for saxophone course coming up in June that's going to give you a chance to come in here at Music Medic uh, in a small group setting and really dive into the basics of repair with our professor Ryan Walker and then we also have our basics for clarinet that's coming up in July that's going to be another chance for you to be in person to dive into all the basics of clarinet repair take your clarinet apart put all the pads in and all of the things that go with that and so one of the topics that we have Doing, that we're doing today is going to relate to the basics of clarinet repair. So make sure you take that, uh, that hashtag clarinet key reaming, put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win a discount on any of the courses that are coming up that you might be interested in. Uh, so Leroy, we also yeah. went to the Napper conference. We talked about that last week. Uh, we went there this weekend and next week I'll be back with Ryan. We'll have a little overview, maybe a couple of pictures from what we did at that show. One of the things, time, yeah, it was a very good time. One of the things that we did at that show was to come out with our clarinet reamers. Yes. Uh, and so we wanted to show you, give you a chance to see uh, what those tools do. And if you are an amateur technician, how you can uh, use these tools to your advantage to create better repairs. So, uh, Leroy, let's get into it. Yeah. And I, I just uh, very briefly show us what we should be looking for to give us uh, an idea of when it is to ream a clarinet key. Okay. What are the conditions that tells us when to ream a clarinet key? Okay. So, reaming a clarinet key all fits in the whole thing in the realm of key fitting itself. Uh, one of the things, um, not for this example, but to give you to show you how bad key fitting can be. If you look at this upper post here, I'm going to move this key back and forth and you can see the movement in that between the key and the post. Um, reaming, reaming a key um, and some of the other tools will actually help eliminate that movement. Uh, but that is one thing to look for when you're, when you're doing any key fitting. This particular um, action here for the reaming, we actually want to release some tension. So if, I, if you're looking at this really carefully, see how that's kind of sticking? And all of a sudden it's moving up. Oh, yeah. It's sticking. That's rough. And moving up. So what's going on with this guy is that the pivot screw inside of here is actually hitting and rubbing on the inside of the taper of the key. Mm. So in order to release, to release that and actually properly have the pivot screw hit in the proper area of the key, we need to ream that out inside of the key to make sure that that pivot screw will fit. Okay, before we do that, let's show them the tools that yes. we need for this job. So, not too many, which is great. Uh, we will need our key reamers, obviously. Uh, a couple screwdrivers, possibly a digital caliper, and then obviously the clarinet joint itself and maybe a pair of pliers. Okay, very good. And let's get into it. What's yeah. next? So, I'm going to work on that key that we just talked about right here. So, the three ring key right here. So, I'm basically just going to take, take the screwdriver. Then... You guys can still see, so we're good. And I'm just going to remove that screw. I don't even need the pliers for that. So here's the screw right here. I will try to hold this in my hand so you guys can see the taper. I know it's a little bit hard to see there, but the edge of that screw or the end of that screw has a taper on it. That taper is where the key actually rides on the pivot screw itself. So from here, uh, I already checked the tapers on this thing, so, this, so the, the, the reamer I'm going to be using is C2, which um, on our website is basically right in the middle of the, um, of the buffet uh, era. Okay. So, you, so if you had something from like the 90s or something like that, this would work. Okay. So I'm just going to take that key right off of there. If you look right inside there, that little hole is where the pivot screw goes, and inside of that hole has okay. the taper on it. So I'm going to take this guy. And then I'm just going to make sure that I'm parallel with the key itself. So if I'm doing something like this and like this, it's actually going to cut in a different way. So i got to make sure that I'm parallel to the actual hinge tube. Okay. And then I will just turn it. So you're turn pushing it. that into the hole. Yep. With, I'm with... not pushing very hard. Okay. Just a little bit to create pressure. And the cool thing is I've already turned it one way. And if I really want to, I can turn it this way too. Okay, and that's it, a feature of our tools. Yes, it yep. cuts this, our, our cutters cut both ways. It is awesome and it's super convenient. 
So um, there will be a little, a little bit of debris in there. So to remove that, you can either blow it out, which is what I'm going to do here, or you can go to an air compressor and put a little bit in there to get all the debris out of there. So okay. So we'll do that. Debris is out. I will put the key right back on there. I'll get the pivot screw. I will put the pivot screw back in the post. Let's see how we did. Hopefully we'll be good. Oops. There we go. Get my glasses back on. And there we go. And let's see. Oh, we've got movement. You got lucky. <laughs> yeah, I would say yes. <laughs> so okay. and, um, I'll explain why Rich said that in a second. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so we have movement, but once we, but once there's movement, there's actually, you want to double check and make sure that you're still good on your fit. Okay. Because just because the key moves doesn't mean the fit is good. All right. So there's two things you want to, there's two things that you want to check for. You want to check for movement between the posts to make sure that there's no movement that way. So. And if there's movement between the posts, we would have to do some swedging. Um, actually, no, there's um, for pivot screwed, areas there is no swedging okay uh, it's all it's all about making sure that the screw makes contact with the key section itself okay so i'm going back and forth here there is no movement that is great the other the other way i'm going to check is actually up and down so you're basically checking back and forth up and down and if you have no movement on either direction you are good to go so i'm going to check no movement Perfect. So you did get lucky. I did. I did get lucky. So, and I, and the reason why Rich is saying that is, if you don't, and there's plenty of times where this will happen. The, the, the rarity of this happening, will it happen? Of course, it just happened right now. Yes. Uh, but many times, the other thing that will happen is either it'll still be tight and you have to go back in there and take more off, mm -hmm. or you could actually take off too much. Okay. So, and then the, the, the up and down action that I was showing you, that actually could have movement with inside of that um, hinge, hinge tube against the screw, which means you've taken too much off, and then the, the, the point in which the pivot screw is supposed to match the key isn't working. And what happens? What do you do if you take too much material off? Good question. That's when we go to this tool right here, which is a post counterbore set. Okay. Um, what that does is it basically removes material inside of the post, and allows the screw to go in farther. So to kind of like sum it up here, you've taken too much material off on the inside of the key, which means the screw has to go in farther to match the taper. In order to remedy that, we have to go to this tool okay. right here and remove material off of the post so the, so the screw actually can go in further and match the taper of the inside of that key. And I, and I think what we'll do, just because that's kind of a different process, we'll do that yeah. in, a, in a different video. Absolutely, but, but, it, but it gives you an idea of how, they, of how yes. these two tools can work in conjunction with each other, and you have to make sure all those things match to make sure the fit's good. And you're absolutely right. So Leroy, uh, my question for you is, yes. just, just to, to say it one more time, how do you know when you're done? How do you know um, when you're done? How do you know when you're done? Um, it tells you, just kidding. It, but in a way it does. So the, so the three things you wanna look, so three things you yep. wanna look for are smooth movement on the key, uh, making sure that the, there's no movement back and forth on the key, so between the posts, and to make sure there's no basically up and down movement on the pivot screw itself. If those three things are working, then you are done with that key section. Okay, very good. Uh, and then f about these reamers, yes. so these are for three different generations of buffet. Correct. Uh, will these buffet reamers work on other instruments? They will. Actually, this instrument that we're using this morning is a Wilmington. So I looked at the, the taper of the pivot screw that's on here and then the three reamers we have. Uh, and then the, the C2 reamer was really, really close. So in that case, I was like, this is perfect. It'll work. Okay. Um, there is no, there is no, there's nothing wrong about using something that's, I'll say, marked for something. But if the taper is the same, to use it for something else. And there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of copies of buffet instruments Absolutely. coming out of Asia. Wilmington is manufactured in Asia, uh, so it just happens to be using the same style of tapered pivot yep, screw. Correct. Very good. Uh, can these be used on student instruments? Absolutely. 
Uh, okay. I mean, I'll say as a general statement, key fitting is key fitting. It doesn't matter if you have a pro horn, plastic horn, student horn. It's all about the key, the fit between the posts and then the, and then the, the pivot screws themselves. Okay, and can these be used on a straight taper or a cylindrical pivot screw? Ooh, good question. And the answer is, unfortunately, eh, no. Okay. So, and I'll and I'll kind of and I'll kind of do a little a little demo drawing here. Why? So here's the head of the pivot screw. I know there's some that are headless, but let's stick with this guy for right now. Okay. So we'll go here. Here's the threaded part, and then it'll step a little bit down, and then it'll have this cylindrical spot like this. All right. So you could ream the key all you want. It doesn't really matter. How this works is the key basically hugs the whole cylinder hmm. around that key. So key reamers don't work on this style here, unfortunately. So for, for key okay. reamers. So the, so the type you want to look for when you're doing, when you're thinking about the key reamers or reaming out the key itself, do a little something like that and something like that is the ones that go to a point like this. So like this, like that. So when they are, when they've got their clarinet apart and they see the top pivot screw, which yep. just looks like a cylinder or a straight taper. As it's like, the, it's like, it's a lot of the Bundy style. Bundy we'll, style. We'll, we'll be like, we'll be like that top one. They'll yeah. know if they have that sort of play that they can't use these tools on that. They have to do something else. Correct. But if they have the bottom one, a tapered pivot screw, then they know they can, okay, I can see if this taper matches the taper of the tool. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Very good. Well, Leroy, that's all the questions that I have for you. Uh, next week, we're going to be back, and I don't see any others. Uh, make sure that you guys are taking the hashtag, Clarinet Key Reaming. Put that in the comments below. That's going to give you a chance to win a discount uh, on any of the courses that we have coming up. And Tim Nielsen, uh, you are the winner from last week. I can't remember if we've talked about it or not. Uh, but I'm not Tim, sure, but we did now. <laughs> Tim, send me an email to richrich at musicmedic.com and we will get you, you, get you your discount code for any of the courses that we have coming up. Next week, we'll be back with Ryan. We're going to do our little Nappert recap. Yes. And then we will also start our three-part series on uh, how to clean oil and adjust on a saxophone. So we're going to take a saxophone, we're going to take it apart, clean it, oil it, maybe replace a pad or two as part of kind of like a spring cleaning uh, series on saxophone repair. So this is something that you could follow along and do in your own shop and see how it goes. Uh, I don't see any other questions. You good? I'm good. I'm, I, and you know what? If I can see Ryan do a COE in 15 minutes, <laughs> yeah, I'm taking that guy to lunch. <laughs> So that's going to be what happens next week. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And I'll put links to the pivot reamers uh, that we have on the website here at musicmedic.com. Until next time, happy repairing.